Hi there. I'm Nancy from Black Sheep Knitting. Hello again to our um, weekly viewers and hello to anybody new. Thanks for um, tuning in to our channel. We um, broadcast, is that the word? We tape, we record. We record once a week and we try to give you helpful hints, um, tips and tricks and what's going on in the shop and new things that we're looking at. Um, today, I have a few things we're going to, I'm finally going to show you how to do a Russian join, but I think we'll do that at the end of the video. Um, I did want to mention what I'm wearing. This is called Study Hall, this um, shawl, and it's made in the Isayer Alpaca 2. So three colors of that. Um, I think they're, I love these colors together. This is beautiful, lightweight. And it's just um, stranded knitting throughout. It's not hard at all, just an easy triangular shawl that's great for this kind of weather. It's a little chilly outside, so it just takes the chill off. And um, I could, if I were going outside, I could wrap it around my shoulders if I wanted to. I thought that I would show you <laughs> the finale of the Winslow Tea. And that's that's this and if you you I won't go through the saga of it you can go back and look at the last two episodes to hear about it but I had some interesting things happen when I finished was finishing and I'm not finished entirely but here it is so when I um, and I'm gonna block this because very often when you pick up on a dropped sleeve and if you're doing the amount of stitches they tell you to and I was trying to do what the pattern told me um, you're going to get this sort of weird thing in here kind of bunches so that will block out so I'm going to do some nice wet blocking on this the other thing that happened on this and it could be the the fabric could be me um, I mean the fiber but I did I um, bound off in pattern which um, the way I generally do it is I knit two together through the back loop or purl two together through the back loop. As it happens, I don't like the way this came out. So I'm at the end of this sleeve, the other sleeve, and I'm doing it just in knit, binding off. Um, and I can show you the very end and how I end my um, piece. So I'm here. I, what did I do here? Um, I'm right at the end. And if you'll forgive me that we're not doing this so close up, but I have knit two together through the back loop and I slip that stitch back to the left hand needle. And then each time I make certain you don't want to split the yarn, which is just what I've done. I pull this out just that much so that I know it's not going to be too tight, and I know that that works. Knit through the back loop, bring this over, bring it back, knit two together through the back loop, and I, again I pull it out the same amount each time bring it back, knit two together through the back loop. So here I am at the end, and what I would do, and I don't have a scissor, but I would cut it here and then pull this through, and then I would weave it into these stitches to close the gap. So that's how I finish off. So. That is the end of my Winslow tea. Next, I will show you, and if those of you who remember, I was unable to get the yarn that I used for the Winslow tea. So I looked around, I wanted to get something that was similar. The yarn that I used was um, Katia cotton cashmere. So I wanted to find something that had 
some cotton and cashmere. And I came up with Baby Cash Soft Merino Sport. And it was in a sport weight. And the, um, this one actually doesn't have, a have cotton. It's wool, 33% acrylic and 10% cashmere. It's super soft. And I happen to really love these colors. So when I was thinking, this one I put four colors together. So I thought, what if I did those four, which I think are really pretty. This one is very similar, but a little bit more coral. The other thing, other one I really loved was this. With This is called Pickles. This is called Pink. This is called Silver, and this is called Rosy. So I love those. You could switch this out. You could do two or three colors. I also thought with this pattern, because I love this pattern, and I think I'm going to do it again, um, you could do a solid color and just do those um, two slip stitch stitches every, I think it's 18 rows or something, or you could make it any number that you want. And again, this is one of those patterns um, that you can do so much with. You can play around. This gives you the idea of different colors. You could do big color blocks. You could do all kinds of things. But if you find a pattern that you like and it fits you, and this one does fit me, um, and I made it kind of short because I want to wear it over a, sh a blouse or over a dress, something like that, I could make this longer. Um, I could do a lot of things with it. So. Those are some options. So these are the new colors. This would be a great baby yarn. It's super, super soft. And it's got that touch of acrylic, which gives it um, a lot of strength. And it's, I just think the colors are delightful. And the cashmere gives it some softness as well. So that's new in the shop. Another new thing in the shop, back again for a repeat, which I did without this for a season, and then did I have it? I don't know. I didn't reorder it this season when I was ordering for summer yarns. And then I thought, I have to have this because I love it so much. This is Juniper Moon Zoe, or Zoe. I don't know how they pronounce it. But anyway, look at these colors for summer. And um, I did can see we did some scarves that had some um, several colors in them. You can come in the shop and see those. I've done a sweater in this color and Agnes just bought this to make a dress, believe it or not. And so it's 60% cotton, 40% linen. It's very soft. I have a sweater at home in this color. And I just look at these. The, all the colors look fantastic together on their own. And I have over here, Robin, if you can look over here, is a sweater that I did last year called Aknaha. Aknaha. And I'm going to pronounce it wrong. It's probably a Scottish word. It was, um, and don't look too closely, there are some mistakes in the lace, but I thought, what the heck. Um, but this is a pattern by Kate Davies, the amazing Kate Davies from Scotland. And she, her patterns are so well written. They're so beautiful. So this was a perfect yarn for this. And this is something that I'm sure I will wear a ton going on vacation this summer. And I'm sure, that, I'm sure that's going to find its way in my suitcase. So any one of these colors would be just fantastic for this. So I recommend it. It's lots of fun. And those of you who can't do wool, um, but want something that has a little bit of tooth to it, a little bit of warmth. It's great. I have another sweater at home, not in this yarn, but a similar blend of cotton and linen. And I just throw it in the washer and wash it. I usually put it on gentle cycle, but I think it would be fine on regular cycle. And it's, it's just great. Um, comes out beautiful every time. Looks brand new. Nothing happens to it. So a good one for the summer wanted to show you something that came back into the shop. We were running out of them. 
Knit blockers, if you don't have knit blockers, you're missing out. These are, and if you can see up close, you can see the little needles on the end of it. Um, and these are for blocking sweaters, scarves. The wonderful thing about them is you know when you're putting pins in to block, it's annoying to keep putting them in, putting them in. This spans a, a space about like that, um, and you just put it in and you've got all of that secured with one tool. So I love these. In fact, I have one set at home and I often need more pins, so I think I'm going to snatch one of these so I have two sets at home. Then I wanted to show you a new color, excuse me for hanging over like this. Um, so we have two new colors of spin cycle that I thought I would show you. I've dyed in the wall. And this one, I just think this is gorgeous. It's called Big Sky. And it's got these pinks and greens and limes. So I was looking and thinking, well, what would be fun with that? And I looked at Moondrake is a sport weight. They're um, soft sport. This one's called Flamingo. Can you see a sweater? with that, one of the Andrea Mowry ones, or others that other color work sweaters, this would be great, and this would be the solid, and this could be the color work. Or, if you're a yellow person, this is a beautiful one. This is called Yellow Tulip. And this one, and they're not kidding when they say soft sport. This is so soft. This is called Electric Pink Candy, and I love this one. Um, so that's new in the shop. The Moondrake isn't new, but this is a new colorway for us. And another new one for us is called Dream World. And this is a deep, deep green with some burgundy and lighter blue. And I just picked, grabbed these, because I thought this would make a really fun um, shift cowl. So that's that. So I'm going to do... Um, the next thing I'm going to do is a demonstration of um, Russian join. So a Russian join is um, a way of adding a new color or adding more um, yarn if you run out of yarn without having to weave in an end. Um, and sometimes you just want to do it that way. Um, you would do it in place of spit splicing. A lot of people do spit splicing, but if you have two yarns that are not, like suppose you have superwash yarn, you can't spit splice that. You need to have yarns 100% um, animal fiber, non superwash, so that um, the pieces will felt. But even when you do spit splicing, sometimes you could end up with kind of a light lump. So this is another, um, another way of um, joining two yarns, and I showed um, a couple weeks ago Magic Knot. This is another one. So you need to have um, a very sharp needle because what you're going to do is pierce through the um, plies of the yarn. So I'm going to take my yarn and kind of try to loosen up the plies a little bit, winding it in the opposite direction. And I, um, those, if you have um, I have a fingering weight yarn here, but if you happen to have a bulkier weight or some heavier weight and you have a little needle, you're going to have to get a needle threader to put the yarn through, but I believe I can do it with this. We'll see. I fold this in half and pull the yarn through. So there I am. And what I want to do is weave my needle through the plies. And the more that you do, the stronger your join will be. So I'm going right through the middle of this. I'm going to do it about the length of the needle. Now, of course, if you do this, you're going to get better at it. But this does save waving, weaving a tail in, etc., etc. Um, so now, what I'm going to do, I want to leave this little loop here. 
and I'm going to pull the needle through thus pulling the yarn I hope she said through what I want which is not happening is for the tail to go through ay, ay, ay. Pulling the other one, I should be. Okay, here it comes. I wasn't pulling in the right place. What I want to do is pull this tail. Right, wake up, Nancy. Okay, so I want to straighten that out, and I still have my little loop here. So, what I'm going to do, and I used two different colors of yarn so that you could see this it well and I'm going to get my needle it helps Nancy if you pull the right one okay and I'm going to just loosen up the plies a little bit and I'm going to go through. Before I do that, don't forget to go through this loop. Okay? So now, I'm going to go start weave through here. Pull it through. So then, here we have the Russian join. But you still have these um, little, just that little hole here. They loop, and you want to get rid of those. So just a little bit Be a little more on the pink there we go so there we have the join and what I'm going to do is trim it trim things, particularly if you're weaving in yarn with a woolly yarn. You can kind of rough up the edge, the end of it, the tail of it, so it doesn't go back through. Like if you're doing, um, if you're um, weaving in ends in your yarn, I always do that. So anyway, there's my join. You can trim it even further if you like. There you have it. So I'm sure people, some people will say I'm not going to bother. Other people will think, oh, this is the neatest trick. So you don't get, you're only slightly thicker where the yarn is, but not terribly. So that's, oops, Russian join. Hi. I wanted to um, tell you about a few things in the shop. A week from Saturday is local yarn shop day, where we celebrate shopping in local yarn shops. So we have an online store, and you're welcome to shop there, but we are trying to celebrate your local yarn shop, and we want people to visit those frequently and enjoy all the great things that go on when you go into a yarn shop. You get Lots of help. We help a lot of people here in the shop. 
and you get to see the yarn, touch the yarn, and um, take part in things that go on in the shop. So that said, we um, are going to do a couple special things. One is we're going to have a trunk show of cowboy girl, cowgirl blues yarns um, from Cape Town, South Africa. And um, we, I saw these in New York at Vogue Knitting and um, I just, I love them. So I bought them and um, I'm going to show you some, uh, some samples of it. This is not online. Um, I don't know if it will be. It might be at some point, but we're going to feature it and it's not available until the 29th local yarn shop day. So I wanted to show you some of her. This is only a few of the colorways that we have. This is a yarn called Proper Sock and it's um, a 75-25, 75, 75 superwash and 25% nylon. She's written 30%, but 25 and 30 don't add up to 100, so I think that's a mistake. Anyway, it's a sock weight yarn. It's lovely. Um, this one's called Sound of Silence. This one is Rainforest, a beautiful, beautiful green. Um, and this is one of my favorites. This is called Bye Bye Love. Love those colors. And she has these in different weights, these same colors. This one is Parsley Sage. Love these colors. She also has a yarn that we were going back and forth about what this is, whether it's a DK or a sport. I think it's somewhere in between. And um, this one is called Brenda Fassi. That must be somebody in maybe in South Africa. Um, this one is the river. Very pretty. And this one is Camps Bay. That's a place in um, near Cape Town. I've been there. It's a great place. And finally, this one, we have other colorways, but this is called Born to Run. And this one, the colors in this, I just think, are so fabulous. So some other yarns that she features are, and I don't have a ton of these, but boy, are they gorgeous. This is a silk mohair. And if you look at the colors in that, and it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful yarn, and it's got 410 meters, which is about 420 something yards. And look at the red at the, in there too. Um, this one is called April She Will Come. That's a favorite of mine, look at that. And this is another one of April She Will Come. Uh, and then this is a f uh, one that she likes a lot, Born in the USA. So she, we have that in some others of her fibers. Then I just was so taken with these and I thought these were, and I think I may have a few solids in this, but I, I don't think I do. But I thought these go really well with if you held them together with something like this. This is a lace weight and they're so soft and so gorgeous and this would be good with a a solid mohair. Um, you could even if you were wild and crazy you could do this but I don't I don't know if I would do that. Anyway this is called PJ Powers and the colors are just so fun. This one is called Alanis Morissette and it's another, oh, oh, I had two of these. So I have enough to put those together to do something or to, um, I think what I would do is either find a lace um, pattern or put a mohair with these because they're so gorgeous. And like even a, a white mohair with that would be lovely. This one's called Happy Days and isn't that happy? And lastly, I have Tambourine Man, which is predominantly white with speckles in it. So we have that to look forward to on um, Local Yarn Shop Day. And we also have, going on that morning, is a workshop with Julia Farwell Clay. 
And um, if you haven't seen her work, look it up on Ravelry. Look up her, um, what would you call it, her group of patterns that she did uh, for Manos. They're really beautiful. Um, and she's going to be here teaching tips and tricks and all kinds of things that she has gathered along the way as a designer, knitwear designer and teacher. Um, so you would love that workshop. It's from 10 to 12 on Saturday the 29th. So we have that to look forward to. And there may be a few spots left in Bruce Weinstein's workshop. I'm not sure you can look online to see. Um, we, we're not sure. In any case, um, we have lots to look forward to. There will be more workshops coming. Um, and I hope you have a great week of knitting, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.